Hey, welcome back to InfoGamer. My name's Nathan, and welcome to this brand new tutorial series on how to use the cross-platform Native Plugins 2 package inside Unity. For this tutorial series, we're going to be going over all the different services that are provided in the cross-platform native plugin. Now I'm pleased to announce that this tutorial series is officially sponsored by Voxel Busters, who are the developers of this package. Now the cross-platform native plugins is just one of the many packages that have been developed by Voxel Busters, so make sure that you check out their content, which I've linked to in the description below. Now for this first lesson, we're going to be going over the general setup for this package and how to install the cross-platform native plugins into your Unity project. Now to get started with the cross-platform native plugin 2, we first need to purchase it and install it into a Unity project. Now I have a link in the description below this video where you can find this plugin on the Unity Asset Store. You can also find this plugin by going to the Unity Asset Store and searching cross-platform native plugin 2. This will bring up two options. One is the light version, which is free, and the second is the official version, which is 69 US dollars. And this is the version that we're going to use for this tutorial series. Now the light version has a lot of the same features but not so many and I'll leave it up to you to read up on those differences. But once you're ready to purchase this plugin go ahead and click on add to cart and then proceed to checkout. You'll then need to fill out this form with all your personal and credit card information after which you can click pay now. Once we've purchased this plugin we can then open up a unity project. We then need to open up our package manager window which I have right here. You can also open up this window by going to the window drop down menu and selecting package manager. We then need to use the packages drop down menu and select my assets and here you should be able to see your cross-platform native plugin version 2 package and with this package selected we'll go ahead and click the import button. This will bring up the import window with a list of all of the assets included in this package. Now I've already imported this package and that's why none of the assets are selected but you'll want to make sure that you keep all of the assets selected so go ahead and click the all button and then click import. Once the package is finished installing we can make sure it's working by going to the window drop down menu selecting voxel busters native plugin essential kit and open settings. This will select the essential kit settings in your project window and display the settings in the inspector. Now at this point in the lesson, I'd like to point you to the documentation on the cross-platform native plugin version 2. I have a link to this documentation in the description below. Now if you'd like to work through this plugin on your own, you're welcome to read through the documentation because all the information that you need to know is in this documentation. But I'm here to help explain it and help you through it. And so in the documentation, you'll first notice that on the left-hand column, there's several categories and each category is a feature that this plugin offers. Then each category has an overview, a use cases, a setup for Android and iOS, a usage, a testing for Android and iOS, and a frequently asked questions. And so throughout this tutorial series, we'll work through the documentation and cover each of these features, and you'll see how I implement these features into my own project. Now the first page in the documentation is the introduction, which explains what the cross-platform native plugin is. To give you my own explanation, I'd say that the cross-platform native plugins are a collection of features that can be found in almost every major mobile game on the market. But these features would normally require you to get into the native language of each platform, which means that you would have to do it for both Android and iOS. But the nice thing about the cross-platform native plugins is that all of that work is already taken care of, and all we have to do now is implement those features with inside Unity. The introduction also states that this plugin is supported for iOS and Android only. The next page in the documentation is the features tab which is essentially another table of contents for all the features that are included in this package. The next section in the documentation is the plugin overview and we'll click on settings. Here it talks about how to open the settings of the essential kit which we've already talked about. You go to the windows drop down menu select voxel busters native plugins essential kit and then open settings. This will select the asset in the project window and display the settings in the inspector. The documentation then talks about enabling the features that you want to use and disabling the rest. And so inside the essential kit settings you'll notice all the same features that are included in the table of contents and each feature has its own toggle. Now as we work through this tutorial series we'll be enabling each feature as we cover them. And so since we're going to be talking about the billing services in this lesson we can go ahead and enable that feature. 
The documentation then goes on to talk about the application settings, which is the first option in the Essential Kit settings. It explains that the application settings are used across all the features that are available, and these settings essentially help your app communicate with Google Play and the Apple App Store. And so let's go ahead and set up our application settings. And so first off, I'm going to expand the application settings. We then want to expand the App Store IDs. For this lesson, we'll get the app IDs for iOS and Android, but we'll skip over tvOS. To get your iOS app ID, you're first going to need to be an iOS developer, and then you need to go to the iTunes Connect dashboard. From here, you're going to want to click on My Apps, and to find the app ID, you just need to select whichever app you want to use. And then we'll click on App Information under General. And if you scroll down a bit, you can find the Apple ID right here. And so we'll select the ID and copy it, then go back to Unity and paste it in where it says iOS. Now what we put in the Android field for the App Store ID is much easier to find. In fact, it's what you would call the bundle ID, and that is our reverse domain name. And so for Android, I'm going to keep it the same as what I did for iOS. And that's everything that we need to do for now in the application settings. The last section on this page talks about the external dependency manager, and it explains how you want to resolve the dependencies on Android after each time you make a change to your essential kit settings. This is done by going to Assets, External Dependency Manager, Android Resolver, and Force Resolve. This will bring up a window, which will take a second to process. The next page in the documentation is the folder structure. This simply goes over where all the Voxel Buster plugins will be installed in your project and it talks more about the external dependency manager but we don't need to make any changes to our unity project on this page and so we'll go on to billing all right that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to install the cross-platform native plugins into your unity project if you enjoyed this lesson please give it a thumbs up if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos